Hi everybody, welcome to my channel Frugalissima. My name's Sam, where I talk about all things sewing. Today I've got a 2020 sewing review, looking at some of the things I've made and the lessons that I've learnt. First of all, I'd just like to say thank you to everyone who's subscribed so far and welcome to anybody who's new. If you hit the subscription button, and the notification bell will tell you when I've got new videos. Usually on a Sunday, I record plans, makes and reviews. During the week, I'm doing 100 days of sewing where I've got some tips and tricks and some techniques videos. And on a Friday, I have been doing Frugal Friday where I'm looking at free patterns and discounts and giveaways. So I don't know about anybody else, choosing just 10 things out of, I think I've made about 60 things last year. That's not to mention all the scrubs and Mars bags and face masks that I made. Just to choose 10 is like trying to choose your favourite child. So I thought I'd go with things that have either progressed my sewing or lessons that I've learnt throughout the year and I hope to inspire and motivate anybody else to get making and sewing. So on to today's video. So I'm going to start with the one that Mandy's modelling here and that's my first ever foray into pattern testing. So back in January, before I started YouTubing, I pattern tested for Goethe of Charm Patterns uh, when she was bringing out her uh, princess coat, which is this one here. So yeah, I'm very proud of this. Uh, lots of lessons learnt and uh, techniques as well. There was a few techniques in there that I've not done before. And the, I think the main, main takeaway from this is don't go into pattern testing in the hope of a free pattern. So although I did get a free pattern that she actually sent me the printed version, it did cost me to print off nine A0 sheets. I was very, very lucky in that I actually blogged for Minerva and contacted Minerva and asked if they would be willing to provide the fabric. So they did supply this vegan wool that I've got here for doing this version. So I've got a full review of that on the Minerva website and my own website as well, which is Frugalissima. So I opted for the notched collar, the big lantern sleeves here, and uh, the full skirt on this version. We've got bound buttonholes and there's quite a lot of tailoring te techniques that I've never used before in this, including a backstay. I've never used a backstay. So within that backstay, I actually embroidered uh, my, my initials and date just in case anybody comes to deconstruct it in future years and then they'll know who's made it. If Minerva hadn't have provided me with the fabric for this, then I would have had five metres to buy, uh, plus the lining, plus all the interfacing, and th there was um, a twirl that I made for her as well, just a very quick uh, fit twirl, so no finishing in on it. And that was actually made out of leftover curtain fabric, so that didn't cost me anything. But yeah, I had to buy the, I had to buy the lining, and I did actually make another version of this before I made the full version. So although I twirled it for fit, I wanted to also twirl it for technique. Uh, just to make sure that I got it nailed, really. So this is the one that I, um, I twirled for technique. I only had enough fabric for a little cropped version and I didn't have enough fabric for the full collar. So I went and bought myself some fur and went for the glam look. The buttons here were from uh, my mother-in-law's stash. So this fabric I'd already got, uh, so that didn't cost me anything, but I did have to buy the fur and the lining. Yeah, I really like the little cropped version. The, the complete, two completely different coats. I mean, Gertie always excels herself in the variations that you can get from one pattern. So there's 24 variations that you can get from this pattern. I used up all the leftover lining fabric, which is a, a polka dot, as you can see here. I made myself um, a vintage dress out of it. And then I made myself another little dress to go with the little cropped version as well. My friend was giving away a load of old vintage patterns, so I picked that up and there was two variations in it. So I made the uh, full skirted variation for the red one. I made a, a fitted version for the blue one. And I really like the look of them, but, you know, the reality is that I don't wear them. <laughs> So I do really like the vintage look and my friends and I do go to some sort of vintage fairs but obviously that didn't happen in 2020 so it's a shame really, it really is a pity and hopefully I'll get a chance to wear them this year a bit more. I've worn the blue one a little bit more than the red one actually. The red one I absolutely love but it is very very um, statement. It's not everyday wear. I should really wear it at home, it's nice and warm and cosy, I should wear it around the house and flounce around the house really. <laughs> 
<laughs> but despite all that, I had a lot of fun making it. I got really creative with using the vintage uh, pattern, which was a Simplicity 3397. And even with the leftover fur then, I made myself a little muff um, to put, keep my hands warm and a, what do you call these? Gonna mess my hair up now. It's a head warmer, I suppose, isn't it? But yeah, I had, I had lots of fun making them and got really creative with the leftovers. So there was nothing wasted except my time, really. So my second favourite is the Parker coat by Stylark. So I made this coat as the topper for my module sew along that Whitney at Tomcat Stitchery was uh, holding uh, at the beginning of the year. At the very beginning of the year, we had a trip to Switzerland, Germany and Austria planned and I wanted a module that was going to keep me nice and warm and cosy and was easy to travel with. So as part of that module, I made two pairs of jeans, a toaster, sweater and two tops. And this was a topper. And I was heavily influenced by Alex Judge. If you watch Alex's channel, she's a very stylish lady. The only impractical thing about this is that there's no buttons. And I don't always reckon much to coats without buttons. But it's just one of those very easy throw-on coats. The fabric is a boiled wool from Fabworks, which I'd had in my stash for a year or two. I know Stylark have a bit of a reputation for being a bit minimalist, shall we say, on their uh, instructions. And I would say, I would agree with that but I would also say that although they don't hold your hand like a Tilly in the Buttons pattern there is enough information on there for you to get by if you've got a bit of experience and other than the notch collar which actually isn't that difficult there's no buttons or fastenings on here so it's actually quite a simple make and although I've actually opted to put bias binding around the edges here so we've got bias binding all around the the facings essentially here. Um, that was just personal preference, you don't have to do that, a boiled wool won't uh, fray. And then I've just done a fancy label in there, because I wanted to. <laughs> a confident beginner could definitely tackle this coat, I would say. And yeah, the lessons learnt from that is, make yourself a coat that you're going to wear, Sam. <laughs> So yeah, it's just an easy to wear, throw over whatever you're wearing kind of coat is this. Despite it not having buttons, I've actually worn it quite a lot. So it won't get much wear during the winter, but certainly through spring, summer and autumn, it's had tons and tons of wear as this. So it's easy to wear over a pair of jeans, I've worn it to work, I've thrown it over a dress when I've been going out. So much more me, I think, is that one. Although I love the vintage look, it's not my everyday style, shall we say. So my next favourite is the Now and Then Patterns uh, Beach Pyjamas pattern. And uh, this is the dress version that I've got on here. Uh, but I've made the trousers and the dress version and I love them both. So again, you're back to sort of a slight nod to vintage and in fact, that's the reason why I picked this pattern up is that I attended a show by History Wardrobe about beachwear and they had these silk beach pyjamas on there and as soon as I saw, I think it was Rosie from Rosie Sews Modern Vintage posted the pattern on Instagram and as soon as I saw it I thought that is virtually exactly that pattern that I saw so I picked it up, it wasn't a cheap pattern, I think it was about £18 there are a couple of variations on it, so there's a dress, a long and short dress and then the beach pyjamas. A few people have commented it's a little bit like the Zadie jumpsuit, which it is but I think this is more, it's much wider legged and much more practical than a jumpsuit with a zip down the back <laughs> for toilet emergencies. But yeah, the dress is much more practical anyway because obviously you don't need to undress to go to the loo. So I love them both equally. They're sort of a joint one. This fabric and the fabric that I made uh, trousers in are both from Lucky Fa Fashions. I've seen this fabric on various websites for lots lots more than what she charges in Lucky Fashions, but it is just a local shop to me. She does sell online, but I don't know whether she'll have this one or not, because I picked this up at the beginning of the year. It is just a cotton lawn, and it's lovely to work with, and I have actually seen Kristen at the Dahlia Society has made a dress in exactly this fabric as well. Sorry about that, I've just had to put the blind down because it was uh, the light was doing all sorts of crazy things on my face. So yeah, this is another pattern that I would definitely recommend if you like that nod to vintage. And one day I will get those silk ones when I can afford it. <laughs> so yeah, I would say the pattern is actually 
quite well written. Again, it's not going to hold your hand like Tilly in the Buttons. There's enough pictures and uh, instructions there for a confident beginner to have a go. The only thing I would say is there is just one buttonhole for um, pulling this tie through here and it does tie at the back. So you've got the one buttonhole but then you've got quite a lot of bias binding so if you've never done bias binding before I would practice on maybe something like the Chelsea Raglan or something like that. You don't have to make your own, you could buy it. And actually the pattern, as I recall, has the bias binding showing as part of a feature rather than hidden like that. I just prefer that look. The uh, one word of warning I would say is that the actual trousers version, beach pyjamas version of it, if you like, does use a lot of fabric. I think I bought three metres and I had very, very little fabric left. And that is because it's got such such wide legs. After all the scrub making and mask making mayhem of uh, sort of March and April, I wanted a little bit of a rest from garment making. I'd always wanted to dabble with quilt making and I tried it a few times and not failed as such, but never really had the um, incentive to continue. I don't know if I got bored or it seemed a, a bit of a slow process. And then I saw my pal Jane on Instagram. She'd had a go with improv quilting and I thought, oh, that looks like fun. <laughs> so I'll give that a go. Uh, so here's mine. It's just in half here. We were in deep, deep lockdown at the time. I just used what I had. And I think that's one of the things with quilting that put me off a little bit is that naively I thought that I'd be able to use scraps from dressmaking. And the reality is that Yes, you can, and this is what I've done here. It's a whole new rabbit hole, and what you end up doing is going out and buying a load of more quilting uh, cottons and what have you, and you end up just end up getting <laughs> more rather than using up. Uh, so that's been my personal experience of, of uh, patchwork and quilting in the past. So I was really pleased actually to get some of these uh, scraps used up. So I've got bits of Liberty in here. That's a bit of Liberty there and uh, that pink rosy one's a bit of liberty. Uh, I've got a bit of old shirts in here. That shirt there I actually bought to uh, practice quilting with. This fabric here was a skirt that I picked up from a charity shop that I made into a so house tab and Montevela top. So it's got, it's, a, it's got a real history as this quilt. It's, it's a memory of, of the awful times that we've gone through and I've commemorated that with with a little label at the back there. You can see I'm no embroiderer, but you can see that I've just put a little memory tab on there. But also that of all the clothes that I've made over the years, so everything in here is, is what I've had. And the wadding inside was an old Ikea blanket. And then the blue at the back was what I bought for the, one of the quilts that I was going to make that I haven't made. So it's to be up to don't decide I want to make it now because I'll have a big lump missing out of it. But I enjoyed every aspect of making this from the actual piecing together, which was just random and, and fun and creative, to the uh, actual quilting part of it and the, the, even the binding. I think that was a Fiona dress by Closet Car Patterns and I just had loads of that left. So that's gone into the quilt and the binding as well. There was one juncture in all of this process where I thought, these scraps are getting more, not less. <laughs> but I think, that's, uh, I think that's perfectly normal. So yeah, I had a lot of fun and I would definitely recommend giving it a go. I have got a video on how to use up scraps and they, I do include that. So I'll link that at the end as well because I've got, got lots of ideas for using up scraps. Uh, but that is a really fun way and I just looked at on YouTube uh, and there's lots of lots of people doing it The good fun about that improv quilting is there are no rules You just do your own thing as long as you can sew two pieces of fabric together You can make make one um, because there's no you know no getting your points right. There's no you know, stitching in the ditch if you want. You can quilt it how you like. There's no rules, it's great. So if you're enjoying this video, please don't forget to like and subscribe and hit the notification bell and that will tell you when there's new videos out. So my next one was a little bit of a surprise and that is my first uh, foray into sewing with menswear and that's the Simplicity 8180. And this came about as part of the Great British Sewing Bee and that is one of the reasons why I started YouTubing. My very first uh, video was a review of the book and then I went on to reviewing the episodes and my pal saw the uh, garment of the week when it was, I think it was holiday week 
and I think it was Mark's garment of the week made with this uh, lovely M Lady McElroy fabric. I haven't got it here to show you unfortunately because it's been given away. And she wanted me to make one for her husband for his 50th birthday in August. I don't normally sew for other people. Lots and lots of reasons but it's my hobby, time's precious and fit as well can also be a bit of a, a big one. But I had plenty of time on my hands. I decided to uh, give it a go. If you're wanting to go into it menswear uh, this is a great one because there's lots and lots of options. You can sew for the man in your life or the boy in your life. There's uh, men's and boys, there's tie and there's boxer shorts. I do have a full review of this on another video. Because of its loose fit, fit's not a massive problem. Technique wise, not a lot of new techniques except I decided to French seam it all and I discovered that you can French seam sleeves into the ham hole. So I did a, a full tutorial video on that one as well. I made it in a Lady McElroy Coleman Boutique uh, just a cotton lawn. We were really really lucky in that we found it the exact same fabric that Mark had used in the Great British Sewing Beast. I think it was a fabric that he probably liked but I think I matched the pattern to it quite well as well. So yeah if you've never made men's shirts before I think that's probably a good one to start with. It's relatively simple. You've got buttonholes and you've got a, a collar. It's just a flat collar or a camp style collar on it. But it's quite loose fitting. But other than that, it's relatively simple. If you've used those, if you've done those techniques before, it's a good one to start with for sewing menswear. And the good thing about that is that it spurred me on to making quite a few videos off the back of that. So I did one about sewing French seam around the armhole and I did another one about uh, pattern matching. And I also did one about uh, making your own bespoke labels because I wanted to put a bespoke label in there and I didn't find any videos that did that showed me exactly what I was wanting to do. So I put a, together a video of that as well. So my next favourite is the one that I'm wearing and this is what I've dubbed the Kelly Low. So it's a blend or a mash if you like between the Closet Cough Calais shirt and the Deer and Doe Melly Low shirt. I picked up the fabric from my local market, which I think is a Pima Lawn. I thought it was a Liberty at first, but I think it's a Pima Lawn. And it is available, is this on, and I've seen this on Minerva and uh, Fabricate at Murfield, several other places. The Calais has been long been one of my favourite shirts, uh, but it's short sleeved. And then I saw the Melly Low when I went to the Manchester Sewing Bee and picked it up there. And I thought, well, maybe if I use the sleeves of the Melilo and graft it onto the Calais, I could have a long sleeve version. And that's what I've done. So we've got long sleeves here uh, and the cuff. And then I've got contrasts on the cuffs and on the collar as well. But yeah, it's just got a nice blend of both of them. It's got elements of both of them in there. I did at first think that they were very, very similar patterns, but some of the finishing techniques are, are quite different. So I'll go into more depth of that uh, in one of my videos, which I'll link at the end. So I just love a shirt dress and I've ended up with something that's comfortable and smart and long sleeve, so I'm nice and warm. So although it's a, a thinnish cotton, I'm still able to wear it during the winter with the sleeves and it blends in nicely with the work from home module that I'm going to talk about later on. The reason it's one of my favourites, it's just so wearable and I've worn it a lot. The only thing I would say is don't go for your flu jab in it, <laughs> like I did, because you've got to get undressed virtually to, to have a, a jab. I didn't think about that. I couldn't roll my sleeves up far enough to get, uh, to get into for a jab, so I had to undress that way. But anyway, you live and learn. So my next one is a bit of a surprise because I think most people will have classed this as, as a fail, but I think most fails can be turned around in sewing. Uh, so that's why I've included it. That is a McCall 6886. And if you watched my work from home module videos, you'll know why I cast this as a fail. I started off by cutting it the wrong way, so the stretch is going in the wrong direction. I had trouble inserting the V-neck the way that they directed it. The twin needle wouldn't play, <laughs> so I had to zigzag, which isn't my favourite way of finishing. It was just one of those projects that just seemed doomed to fail, but the long and short of it is I had enough fabric to remake it the way that I wanted to make it, and I just wear this as a pyjama top. There's always more than one way of doing things as well. The, um, the way that they ins inserted that V-neck, that lapped V-neck, I just couldn't get my head around how the instructions were trying to tell me to do it. But there's more than one way of doing things. All I did was ended up using the method that's in the Vera top from Forget Me Not Patterns. 
uh, and just when I redid it, I just used that method instead. And I actually prefer that method because it's not lapped. That lap on that V, I was never keen on it anyway. Lessons there to just learn from it, you know, dust yourself down and your fabric can either be reclaimed like I did it with the, the quilt. I could have obviously knit where you don't, but with if it's a woven that you feel that you've had a fail with, you can put it into something else. You can make a bag with it. You can, you know, can make something smaller with it. Masks now, or, you know, with knitwear like this, or knit fabric, should I say, like this, you just use it as sleepwear. This is, and this is why I've included it, because it gets worn more than the rest of the things that are made in the module, or most of the things that are made in the module, because I, I wear it for bed. <laughs> so, yeah, there's no fails in sewing, just learning opportunities. So that's why I wanted to include that one. Next up is a strong contender for my most worn item of 2020, and this is the apron from Tasuti Fabrics. This is a free pattern that is downloadable from the website and this just gets worn every evening when I'm making tea or dinner if you're not from Yorkshire. So excuses if it's covered in splashes of uh, butternut squash soup or whatever. <laughs> Excuse that but it does get, get used a lot and I do wash it but not every day. I'm really proud of this because it was the first tutorial that I ever put together. I know not everybody wears them but they just save your clothes from so much splashes and, and stains and I've always worn an apron and I call me old-fashioned and obviously the, the fabric is quite old-fashioned. So the fabric was picked up from a car boot sale, I paid £5 for five metres for it, made a jacket, made a skirt, made lo numerous Mars bags out of it and um, this is just about what was left. It's not everybody's taste, I know that, but it kind of stands for everything that I stand for in that it's practical, it's frugal, it costs me next to nothing to make and it's a great thing to start with. It's it's everything that I try and do on the channel, as in it's accessible. So it's a great thing to start with if you're wanting to get into garment making. An apron's a great thing to start with because you don't really have uh, fit issues with it. It doesn't matter if you make a mess of it. You're only wearing it to cook in. And you can make, make them from anything. As long as they go in the washing machine, you can make them from old bed sheets or any kind of remnants. Just as long as you've got over a metre of, of a remnant, you can make it from just about anything. So yeah, I'm, I'm proud of that one. And it's kind of what, what I stand for. It's my YouTube channel expressed in a garment, if you like. So number nine will come as no surprise to anybody who's watched this channel recently. And that is Vera Top from Forget Me Not Patterns. And this is another free pattern, and it's just nice v-neck statement sleeves into a deep cuff here. And it's just a really nice, comfortable thing to wear. So it's not too fitted, so any bulk that I might have put on over Christmas <laughs> isn't uh, too glaringly obvious. I've just made it with a, a cotton jersey that I picked up, a single jersey that I picked up from Fabworks about 18 months ago for another project that I never got around to making and it's just easy to throw on with a pair of jeans but still looks nice and smart and I made this in November so it's not my most worn garment because I've not had it long enough but it's certainly one that I have made again and again so I've recently done a full review of this pattern and I've also done a video on all the ways that I've managed to hack it so far and I've got a few more in the offing as well so I've lengthened it into a dress I've put a turtle neck on it, I've done a contrast um, sleeve. It's just a really comfortable, nice thing to wear. And I will definitely be making much more of these, I think, over the over the course of the year. I can think of lots more hacks that I can do with this. So finally, drum roll please, number 10 is the Harper Cardigan from Sinclair Patterns, another free pattern uh, that I discovered sort of autumn time this year. I think Andrea behind the pink door has made quite a few of these made it as part of my second module wardrobe as the topper and I was trying to put something together out of this module wardrobe that uh, was used in all the patterns and fabric that I already had and originally this Cali low was going to be part of it as either a Cali or a Melly low. When I tried the Cali and the Melly low on with the bottoms that I got for it which was the Ariel skirt and the paper bag trousers I found that that style didn't really go with those trousers and that skirt so I ended up making this what I'm calling a Cali low and this cardigan really brings it all together. Blue in this fabric is the same as a the blue there and it just it just pulls it all together. So I did end up 
having to buy the fabric for this uh, but everything else for that module I already owned and this fabric is from my fabrics it's a cabled cloak and I absolutely love it it's a long line so it's just the right length for this Calilo uh, and it hits at the right length for the Ariel skirts that I made as well goes with the paper bag trousers goes with absolutely everything it's my colour or it's the colour that I like to wear whether it's my colour or not I don't care it's the colour that I like to wear which is like a denim blue uh, so therefore it goes really well with jeans it's perfect for what it was made for which was working from home so although I've been back at work I've still been wearing it to work and it just keeps me warm it keeps me cozy and I think that's really been the theme of, of everything that I liked really um, yes, the princess coat is really nice and stunning, but it's not practical for everyday wear. Lessons learnt here are just, just make something that you're going to wear and that you're comfortable in, or that's what I need anyway, something that I, I, look, I look reasonably smart, but comfortable as well. And yeah, I feel like myself in it as well. And I've actually just made uh, another version of this as well, the shorter version. So if you go to my Instagram account, which I'm frugal are over on Instagram, you'll see that version, but I will chat about that in a later video. So yeah, amongst all the madness that's been going off in the world, sewing has definitely been a solace for me and I hope I'm inspiring or motivating people to do the same and get the dust off your sewing machine and give it a go. I mean, it's only fabric. Things go wrong for people that have been sewing for years, as you've just seen. Just cut into that fabric and, and get that sewing machine out. And you know, if you haven't got one and you're watching this, I don't know why you'd be watching this, but you're watching this and thinking, yeah, I want to give it a go. Borrow one. Don't borrow one from somebody who wants to sew. <laughs> but you know, if you if you've got a relative or a friend who's got you know that's got a sewing machine that only runs up curtains every once a flood with it, ask ask them if you can borrow it and give it a go. Really, um, all about wanting to make sewing accessible to everybody, whether that's cost or technique. And this at Harper Cardigan is a brilliant example of it's just a, a simple cardigan, the one that I made recently it took me about an hour to sew and yeah I've got an overlocker so it's a bit quicker but you don't need an overlocker for knits you don't need any specialist equipment so I have got a couple of videos sort of talking about that as well but I'm assuming that if you've got this far that you're already, you've already sewn you're already sewing my other little thing I would just want to say is yes I might have made 60 things um I've that's that's because I, I love sewing and that's what I've got lots of spare time. Not everybody's got the time or the space or the energy to make so many things in a year. You know, there's lots of YouTubers out there that make far more than me, some that make, make less. Don't compare yourself to where I am to where you are. You think if I inspired you to make one thing this year and dust off that sewing machine, then that's, that's me happy. Right, that's pet talk over i will come back with some plans of as such next sunday probably and i will speak to you later thanks for watching bye <music>